Hi guys, so today I want to talk about the different ways that our eyes see subtractive color. And probably the way that we are most familiar with at this time is atomic mixing or mechanical mixing. And that's where the paints are actually mixed together. So they're mechanically put together. And so that's when we would see our red orange from the mixture of the scarlet red and the deep yellow. So that's mechanical mixing or atomic mixing, however you want to call it. And then the other thing that we've got, if you've ever seen the Surat painting, um, La Grande Jete, um, it's the painting where when you get really close, you see that it's a pointillist painting. And that's where everything is little dots. And so we've got little dots of one color. And then little dots of the next color. And in this case, at a distance, our eyes blur those together and we get the effect of atomic mixing. But in reality, it is the dots and this is called partitive mixing. So at a distance, these two would start to look the same. And those are both the most basic sorts and most easily understood types of subtractive mixing. Now, something a little bit different that you're probably aware of is transparency. And that's where we've got light bouncing down through one layer of paint, hitting the paint below it, and then bouncing back at our eyes. So I've got two bases of different colors. And let me actually use a little bit more transparent pigment, the lemon yellow. I've got that same scarlet red that we used up here, down here. And if I take this yellow and put a thin skin of it over that red, you can see we're seeing transparency, and so we're seeing a reddish orange coming through the layer of yellow. And this is called process colors, also transparency. And this is the sort of color use that you would see on product packaging or printmaking. But what we're going to do is kind of a combination of the two. We are going to fake it. We're going to use false transparency. And we're going to do that with the process colors. And these are the paints in this box that I had you write no on. So this would be primary yellow, primary cyan, and primary magenta. And if you remember what I said, these aren't the same primaries that we would use in a color wheel. These are process primaries. So they're different, and you'll notice that when we look at the magenta especially. So what I've got here is a mark of magenta. And then say, I've got this mark of the primary yellow. And where they would overlap, if they were to overlap, they would make this orange color. So on your design and the instruction, the parameters are listed on canvas um, for the design. You are to have areas that overlap each other. So you would have shapes that, you know, come like this and overlap each other. So you would do, say, magenta here, I'm putting an M facing me, and yellow here, 
And then right in the middle, you'd have magenta plus yellow. And then you would mix the magenta and yellow to make the in-between color. And it'll look like you're making transparency, even though you're not. <clears throat> now the amount of each paint that you put in there will determine which one looks like it's on top of or beneath the other. So I'm getting a pretty rich, here you can see it, deep reddish orange here. So by having that reddish orange at that intersection of the two, it's going to make it look like there is a dominance of the red. I don't know if you can see the effect really because that orange is so deep. Something to note about these process primaries, they are all very translucent. This is different than our other colors, which are generally opaque. So because of that, you're going to need lots of layers on here to show the paint in the most opaque form it will come in. So just be aware of that. You're gonna need multiple layers of these, probably three layers of paint for each shape that you paint. Remember, remember, you're not doing this. You're not doing this. You're faking it by actually mixing the two colors together.